whether you're working on just having a different sound somewhere in your solo, a different flavor, or you're actually trying to learn jazz and you want to improve your phrasing, then you're probably stuck with lines that sound mechanical, that really miss that great feel, that phrasing. And you probably want to sound more like this. What you want to learn is to start hearing and playing licks that have this type of phrasing. And that may sound incredibly complicated, like you have to transcribe 150 Charlie Parker and John Coltrane solos. But there's actually another way that can get you started a lot faster and a lot easier. For most jazz licks, there are two main ingredients, meat and potatoes, if you will, the scale and the arpeggio. You can let me know in the comments which one is which. To keep it simple, I'm going to use an A minor seven chord as a two chord in G major, which you may also call the Dorian scale or mode. So something like this. And you can play an A minor seven arpeggio, which is of course the melodic version of that chord like this. The way you're playing sounds using just the scale and the arpeggio is probably like cooking without any spices. Right. Bland, under seasoned, under so let's get started fixing that. Now there's a lot more happening because I'm not just playing a line where I'm running up and down the scale and all the notes sound the same. And I'm using different techniques to get that sound and I'm also skipping around a lot more. And really this is coming out of just using this simple four note phrase. Already with these four notes then there's a lot happening. I'm changing direction a few times already and going up to the D and then all the way down to this chromatic leading note, this nice A sharp which I'm then resolving, but I'm using other techniques to change the sound, to make things sound different. And I'm doing that by sliding back into the B. Again, just to get a different sound, to make the line sound more interesting, more surprising to whoever's listening. When you play this, then try to add an accent to the high D on the one end, this note, because that makes it sound a lot more like jazz. That's really a typical thing for jazz that the syncopated notes get small accents. This phrase is probably the easiest to use if you have a place in the scale that is like this. So you have B, C and D, half step and then a whole step. It doesn't really work that well and gets difficult to play if you start moving around. But the basic version is still really great and you can get a lot of licks out of it. A similar but a lot more flexible little phrase is also still the easiest to play on one string. But actually there's a way around that and I'm going to cover that just after this. Here I'm also mixing different techniques to get the line to sound more interesting by not having the notes sound the same. And here again you also want to give an accent to that D on the one end and just to really bring out the syncopation. Now this is a great phrase to move around and on one string that could sound something like this. This is a great way to explore and make sure that you know the fretboard. But in fact, there's also a way of playing this phrase that actually works if you don't have all the notes on one string. Something like this. So now the pull off on the one end still gets an accent, but the last note is on the next string and it still works. So in this case, it's followed by a little scale melody. So, and then the A minor seven arpeggio and a little scale one just to take us to the B, the ninth of A minor. To me, the one that really mastered using phrases like this would probably be Charlie Parker. I actually did a video discussing this using one of his solos on Patreon, but maybe that's something I should also do a YouTube video on. If you wanna see examples of this on guitar, then I would say Joe Pass is definitely one to check out. Let's have a look at another great way to make your lines sound like jazz phrasing and also start to combine the different building blocks so that you get really amazing sounding line. A few things are going on here, but of course the main ingredients is this 16th note trill. As you can see, I'm using an E minor seven arpeggio over the A minor seven, and that's actually one of two arpeggios that are really great for that chord. So if you have an A minor seven arpeggio, then that's of course, from the third, we get a C major seven arpeggio. And from the fifth, we get that E minor seven arpeggio. So for E minor seven, the E and the G are just chord tones and the B and the D 
are the 9th and the 11th on top of A minor 7, and they are both notes or extensions that sound great. You can also see that C major 7 is a great arpeggio to use when you're improvising over an A minor 7. Okay, back to the trill. This is the easiest to play if you have the notes on two strings. And actually, this trill is pretty easy to practice in a position, like this. And of course, what you really want to do is to start combining all these things to really create some interesting lines. That could be something like this. And of course, you can also use the trill together with the second building block. So it really pays off to keep developing and adding new ideas to this vocabulary of small building blocks that you can put together and make your own licks with. Those are the real licks that you want to fish out of the Charlie Parker solos or anything else that you're working on. And when you find something like this, then spend time practicing it and also spend time composing licks with it so that you become better at using it and getting it to sound good and it also really becomes a part of your playing. Now, if you want to dig into some essential but great sounding jazz licks, then check out this video on the three most important bebop licks and add those to your vocabulary.